Lie about being divorced? Fine, I'll become your villain. If you like true revenge stories, you found the best place for your vengeful needs. This episode features four cheating revenge stories to savor, in which the victim saw themselves become the villain. We start with a soldier who goes on deployment and leaves his wife alone. Enter the typical Jody, shirking his patriotic duty while staying home, plotting to steal someone else's wife. Little did she know, her choice could backfire and ruin her life. Followed by a cheating husband who orchestrates the downfall of his wife to cover his own dirty affairs. But he forgot about her vengeful guardian angel. Man lies about being divorced and takes advantage of an vengeful Sicilian girl with Latina roots. This story is so crazy, it's hard to believe. But Royal AI lets you decide on this one. The last revenge story will provide some alleviation from nuclear revenge, as a cheating girlfriend will have to face the walk of shame to reflect on her devious actions. Before we start, be sure to exercise your vengeful devotion. Include the cheating like button in your prayers by wishing that if it trips and falls down, it will fail to grab whatever it tries to hold on to, and because of this, will fall down even harder. Naturally, viewer discretion is advised. These revenge acts might be disturbing to snowflakes. My story is about getting revenge on my cheating wife, now ex, as well as the karma that came afterwards. So I'm in the army and we were married. At the time, I was approaching my first deployment to Iraq. This made this period extra stressful and it had my wife wanting me to find a way to stay and not deploy. Obvious things any wife would try to talk about. Anyways, we have no kids but both want them. So we talk about getting our affairs in order and plan on getting out of debt while I'm gone. She talks to her best friend back home in another state where we are both from. Her friend agrees to let her move in and charge a modest $300 in rent, so that we can get out of debt and start a family when I come back. A plan I was actually very pleased with. Fast forward to the day I deploy, she is crying her eyes out, saying she will miss me and loves me and we will start a family when we get back. Fast forward another two months. She starts acting distant. Not wanting to talk much on our scheduled calls or text back one or two word answers. We've been together six years, during this time she was never at a loss for words. Anyway, one day she says she needs some space. She asks someone who is 10,000 miles away, for space. I ask her why she says she just needs space and she answers vaguely about wanting to find herself. At this point a thought crossed my mind, I remember back when we lived at home, she had a guy friend who was always being borderline inappropriate. I'm not a very jealous person and I trust her but I start seeing said guy in basically all her pictures she posts with a group. Every single picture, he is in there. Everyone's presence changes though, but he's always there. So for the first time, I'm starting to get very jealous and uneasy about everything. So I clone her phone with T-Mobile's digit service. And I receive every text she receives as well as every text she sends. I'll never forget the first text I saw after cloning her phone. Hey babe. I'll see you after work, want me to save you any of my leftovers? From her to him. It destroyed me. I lost 35 pounds in a week. I didn't eat or sleep. I just stared at the phone, watching every conversation from beginning to end. It wasn't just a sneaky fling, I watched them talk about trying to have a baby. It was literally everything a married person fears. I ask her if she is seeing someone and she tells me she isn't. She is taking care of herself and she loves me, the whole shebang. I didn't flow with that, so I stopped responding to her texts for two whole months. Over this time, she cracked. She finally admits cheating, but she added that he is so much better than me at sexy time. He's actually treating her right, and he does what she wants. During this time she had control over the money I was making for us overseas. She was paying off our debt. But she also made sure to pay for the matching love tattoos they got together. With this money, she also paid for both to go to shows and buy male clothes. I guess those weren't for her. Think I just have to eat it and sit still 10,000 miles away? So, this is where the revenge starts. I simply froze the account for a month, during that time I changed every password of every account to things she won't guess, army jargon slang terms. I block her on Facebook and my phone, so she has no way to contact me. She lost her car to repo a few months later. Got kicked out of her place, had to sell her prized shoes and purses just to manage. I then find out she got a job at her old restaurant. So I post all the text conversations I have of her and the guy talking about having babies, I make sure the timestamps are on it as well. I also added conversations we had with the matching timestamps, 
showing all of our friends what she was doing during that time. My close friends call and complain about both of them at their job. They work at a restaurant, so some of my friends dined and dashed there. They both get fired. At this point, she must have thought it would be a good idea to get back at me, to make me the villain of her story. So she tries to call my command and tell them that I am abandoning her and she can't provide for herself. My commander knows what is going on. He does nothing, because he had something similar happen to him personally. Then about a month before I come back, she calls me from another number. To give me the friendly reminder that she is pregnant with his kid. Mind you, I'm still overseas so we cannot get divorced yet. She moved away with him. 10 hours away from my homestead. Fast forward some months, she calls me 5 months pregnant. Crying uncontrollably, asking me where she should go. Apparently they have a big fight and it blew up to the point she tells him she's leaving. She doesn't know where to go though, so in her mind, that's where I came into play. I simply say, sorry, not my problem anymore. I don't speak to her till January this year. We got divorced before the kid was born so I have no extra financial responsibility to her. She calls me again from a mutual friend's phone. He's hitting me. I really don't know what to do. Maybe you don't cheat on your husband when he is deployed, for some guy who talks a big game. Well, I guess you are happy to hear about this. I answer, no, but I'm glad I know I'm not the bad guy in this story. Let me emphasize I wasn't celebrating that she was physically abused, I did tell her to call the cops but that's all I said. It's not right to abuse someone, but I also have no responsibility to watch out for her well-being anymore. I don't speak to her for another month after she finds a way to contact me again. Apparently she's still with him, but he's cheating on her, not with one girl, but two girls. She tells me she's sorry for what she did to me and that she regrets all of it. She's sorry for the way she fricked it all up. I tell her she did. All in all this woman destroyed my life. Put me into a deep depression I'm still dealing with. But I do feel a little better having proof that I wasn't the problem. To think this happened so many years ago, I came back to an empty bank account, an empty house, as well as seeing my then-wife pregnant with another man's baby. Fun fact to add, she actually hit me up yesterday to ask for some money to help cover rent. Yeah right. This happened about 4 years ago, but I recently found out how part of my revenge plan panned out, which is what prompted me to share this. I have never shared this with anyone before. My mom has been best friends with Eileen, since they were both kids, and Eileen has kind of been like an aunt to me. About 5 years ago, Eileen's husband of more than 25 years surprised her by asking for a divorce. Eileen lived about 6 hours away from my mom at the time, and I lived out of state, so I didn't find out how everything went down until a few months after their divorce was finalized. Unfortunately, Eileen's life kind of spiraled out of control after the divorce. She developed depression and a drinking problem. But my mom and some other childhood friends were able to convince her to move back to her hometown. And then they convinced her to go to rehab. I moved back home shortly before Eileen went to rehab, because my school-slash-work schedule was pretty flexible. I was able to house it and take care of some stuff while she was in rehab. The first time I visited her in rehab. I got the whole divorce story, and it was bad. Eileen's ex, Jeff, hadn't talked to Eileen about any problems prior to asking for a divorce, so she just assumed he fell out of love with her. I was immediately skeptical about the things Eileen told me. First, Jeff, who was an executive at a pharmaceutical company earning mid-six figures, was fired from his job a year before they split up and decided to take a break before looking for another job. It was weird to me that Jeff decided to take a break from work because he'd always been such a workaholic. Eileen hasn't worked in years because of a disability. But she has some property and a trust her parents left her, that lets her live a comfortable life without working. Jeff and Eileen lived off money from the trust while he was unemployed. Then, after Jeff said he wanted a divorce, he refused to go to couples therapy or talk about why he wanted the divorce. The only thing he would say, was that they had grown apart and that he was sick of being with a woman like Eileen. He said Eileen's mother was right about her. Eileen's mother was a classic narcissist, and she bullied Eileen horribly about her attractiveness, weight, intelligence, etc., which caused a lot of psychological problems that Jeff knows about. Finally, right after the divorce was finalized, Jeff moved out of state, but to a state he didn't have any family or connections in. Jeff's parents are still alive and in their mid-80s, and Jeff is pretty close to them, so it didn't make any sense to me why Jeff wouldn't move to be closer to them if he wanted to move after the divorce. I didn't say anything to Eileen because I didn't want to upset her, 
but I thought Jeff might have been having an affair, had orchestrated his unemployment to avoid paying alimony, and then moved out of state to be with his mistress. I just didn't have a way to confirm it at the time. Then Eileen asked me to look for a box of Jeff's stuff he had asked her hold for him until he moved into his new apartment. She told me all the info on the box, contents, and his new address was in an email he sent her, and she gave me the password to her computer so I could access the email. This is where I lucked out. It turns out Jeff had used her computer and set up his email on the computer. I accidentally clicked on the app for his email when I was searching for Eileen's email. I decided to take a peek at his email. The first thing I noticed was that he had mostly stopped using that email address three years before, which was about one year before he was fired. In a folder for digital receipts I found a confirmation email for a dating site, which I think he saved there accidentally. I also found a verification email for a new email address. I started to put together a speculative timeline of what happened. I guess that about three years before, Jeff started an affair and shortly after, he decided to get a new email address to help keep the affair secret. I wanted to access his dating profile to get more information, so I tried to use the forgot password feature to see if I could generate an email that would allow me to reset the password and log in that way. Unfortunately, the dating site didn't recognize Jeff's old email address. I thought I might be able to get into Jeff's new email using his old email to reset the password, and then, maybe, I could use the new email to get into the dating website. But I didn't want to risk locking Jeff out of his new email and alerting him until I knew more about what he'd done. And here's where I totally lucked out, the email app Jeff downloaded to Eileen's MacBook had a note feature, and super genius Jeff saved some passwords on notes. Most of the passwords weren't helpful, but I did get the password to the dating site, his Twitter and Netflix account. I logged into the dating site using his new email address and the password. I was able to read messages Jeff sent to another woman before he broke up with Eileen. The new mistress sent Jeff her email address in one of the messages. I searched Facebook for the mistress's email address and found her profile. I couldn't read the mistress's posts, but she left her photos public. She had recent photos of her and Jeff, so I knew they were still together. She also posted a photo of a construction crew breaking ground on a new home for her and Jeff, which was interesting. Interesting because I got the impression from Eileen that Jeff didn't have a lot of money after the divorce. Here's where my background is important. At the time, I was attending law school, I moved back to my hometown for one semester for a legal residency, and I had access to Lexis database, specifically, their public records database. I had spent a good portion of one of my summer internships tracking down property records and other assets to help recover judgments for clients, so I knew how to search for public records. The mistress had purchased several acres in a wealthy suburb several months before Jeff filed for divorce, and there was no mortgage listed on the record. I'd already found the mistress's LinkedIn page, so I knew she worked as an executive assistant before she moved out of state with Jeff. She didn't advertise her salary, but I doubted she could have afforded the property with her salary alone. It's possible she had money outside her salary, but I suspected Jeff gave her money to purchase the land before he filed for divorce. I also found an updated record in Lexus showing Jeff and the mistress as joint owners of the property. I called the county recorder office to confirm ownership of the property, dates, etc. The mistress had filed a quick claim just five weeks after Jeff's divorce was finalized. I was still hesitant to try to log into Jeff's new email. So I decided to check his old email again to see if there was anything else I should investigate before moving to the new email. I didn't find anything, but I noticed that several passwords in his notes were the same. I decided to try to log into his new email using the same password he used for the dating site. I figured the two accounts were created around the same time, so if he had recycled a password, that was the most likely candidate. It worked. His new email was a gold mine. Because this story is already getting ridiculously long, I'll list some of the relevant stuff I found. Jeff hadn't been fired from his old job. He quit and lied to Eileen. I found an email from his admin asking where to have payroll send his last check and details about a goodbye party for him. Some emails between Jeff and a boat repair person mentioning a leak somewhere on one side of the sailboat near the engine compartment. The repair guy couldn't find the source of the leak, but he talked about current and future problems with mold and the engine on that side. Emails between Jeff and a boat broker, which included the email address of buyers farther down in the string. An emailed report from the boat inspector which didn't include the leak or any mold damage or potential damage to the engine. Emails between Jeff and his contractor about changes made to the new house's sunroom. Emails between Jeff and the mistress. 
They had married and shared a calendar online. Some flirty emails between Jeff and another woman. Lastly, some emails with info on Jeff's new employer. I downloaded all the important emails and their attachments and started thinking about a revenge plan. To my mind, everything was fair game. He lied about being fired, so I wanted him fired from his new job. I suspected he hid his money before his separation from Eileen to help pay for his new house, so I wanted him to lose his house. He cheated, so I wanted to destroy his new relationship. Anything I could do about the boat was a bonus. The easiest place to start was the boat. I had no idea if the source of the leak was found and repaired or if the leak was verbally disclosed to the buyer, but I figured Jeff was a lying peanut so odds were fair he hid the info from the new buyer. I sent the emails between Jeff and the repairman and another copy of the inspection to the buyer. I searched Jeff's county court website five months later and found out the buyers filed a suit against Jeff and the broker and inspector. Bingo, I couldn't figure out how to take or destroy Jeff's house, so I settled for contacting the county inspector's office to complain about the sunroom not being up to code. This is actually what prompted me to write this post. Because I just found out some details about what happened with the county inspectors. Keep in mind, I heard about this from a third party years after the fact, so I don't know all the details. It turns out the sunroom was code compliant, but the inspector did find a workroom attached to the detached garage that wasn't on the original permit. The workshop had a bathroom that the contractor attached to the property's septic system after the initial inspection. A mutual friend of Eileen and Jeff told Eileen and me that Jeff had to pay a fine and the workshop had to be removed. This ended up causing construction delays, which will become relevant below. As for destroying Jeff's marriage, my first impulse was to send the new wife the flirty emails between Jeff and the other woman, but when I searched for that woman on social media, I couldn't find anything. I had no way of knowing if the new wife knew the other woman and would think that the emails weren't important or evidence of an affair. Then, I played around with the idea of updating Jeff's dating profile and sending stuff to his wife. But it would take too long to manufacture a fake relationship with real dates and times, and I was worried that Jeff might get an email alert from the dating site that would clue him in. I ended up just risking that the new wife wouldn't know the other woman. I pretended to be someone concerned about an affair between Jeff and the new woman. Overall, I kept the accusation vague, but I did say Jeff and the new girl went out to eat and to the movies on a few dates Jeff's shared calendar said the new wife was out of town. I couldn't come up with a way to get Jeff fired. I rechecked his email and calendar over several weeks looking for something I could use to get him fired. Eventually my legal residency got too busy to devote much time to revenge, so I decided to just let it go. Eileen recently reconnected with a friend she shared with Jeff, and that friend gave Eileen an update on Jeff. Eileen shared the details with me, and that's what reminded me of what I did and prompted this story. It turned out that I didn't need to worry about sabotaging Jeff's career. By luck the woman Jeff had been emailing was actually his assistant at his new job, and Jeff's new boss was his brother-in-law. Jeff and his new wife actually moved to her hometown so she could be close to her family and so Jeff could go to work for his new brother-in-law. I have no idea if Jeff actually was cheating on the new wife. He told the mutual friend that passed this story on to Eileen that they hadn't been having an affair. It didn't matter to new wife, though. Because she and Jeff got together when Jeff was already married, she didn't have a lot of trust in Jeff. She didn't believe Jeff's denials when I sent the email about him having an affair. She filed for divorce. And Jeff's brother-in-law boss fired him. And since the construction was delayed the new house wasn't finished when Jeff and new wife divorced. They had to sell an unfinished home, and Jeff took a big financial hit. Finally, this next part wasn't part of my larger revenge plan. But I am pretty petty, so I took the box of Jeff's stuff, mostly photographs, and threw them away. I told Eileen they must have been lost in the move. Signed both of Jeff's email addresses for a bunch of spam, newsletters, mailing lists, etc. Deleted his Netflix watch list. Posted, retweeted, and liked a bunch of sexy time entertainment content on his Twitter account and deleted all the accounts he was following. I never told Eileen what I did, because I wanted her to have plausible deniability and I didn't want to interfere with her recovery. She doesn't know about the boat lawsuit or the Netflix and Twitter stuff, but she did take satisfaction from his divorce and job loss. I probably would have let it all go if Jeff had just cheated, because I had always really liked Jeff. I always thought he was nice, but I was obviously wrong about him. Nice people don't weaponize childhood abuse to mentally torture their wives. As far as I'm concerned, Jeff deserved everything I did to him. The following story is told from a female's perspective. 
My story is a memory from a person I am no longer. I know it sounds strange, but I changed. I'm not proud of this and for some, they won't believe it or will have their pitchforks out after hearing it. But this is my story. I'm half Italian, half Latina. So I'm fluent in both Spanish and Italian. When I was a naive 24 year old, I met a charming smart and way older man. We call him Jake for the story. His sister is Dana and I'm Gina. Now to the story. Jake was 42, recently divorced, or so he told me, and got a kid that he would see during the weekends. We meet online through a poetry website where both of us used to write. He was very aloof and stern on his comments and not very popular on the website because he used to always come off like an arrogant prick, but I really liked his poems regardless of his personality and that's how it began. I commented on one and he instantly PM back praising my writing and asked me if we could collaborate on a duet together. I've already done it a thousand times with a few friends and people on the site that I respected, so I said sure. So long story short, we met on Hotmail Messenger. This was nearly 11 years ago kids, so no WhatsApp, although we did chat on Facebook too. This will become relevant later. Long story short, we instantly connected. He was funny, handsome and really sweet underneath all his bravado. And his dark sense of humor was right up my alley. We spent months pulling all-nighters just talking and writing together. Not humble bragging, but I was pretty popular on the site because I won a few awards, so by association he became more popular too. People started reading Jake's poems and commented and obviously he got an ego boost because of it, but I digress. Our relationship became more serious after he confessed that he was falling for me and I was smitten. So I went along with it. We talked about my recent breakup and he assured me that he would never lie to me, because the witch of his ex-wife cheated on him and he was devastated until he met me. I was shocked after hearing how bad his ex was, but assured him that I was all in. And I meant that. One important detail about our turbulent romance is that he was in South America, he's from there, and I was still living in Italy, in my hometown. So after almost two years of excuses for how tied up on work he was, I decided to surprise him with a visit. I bought my ticket and it literally was like a dream. He picked me up, we kiss, hug and he took me to his beach house, which would have been my first red flag but I was dumb, young and in love. He would say that it would be so much easier and fun for me doing touristy stuff on a beach port than staying in his suburbs house without a car. Because I told him in such a short notice that he didn't have the time nor the means to take time off. Which was a blatant lie again, because he was one of the partners of the company. I bought it and off I went on my own almost for the entire week that I was there. He would spend one night with me and the rest of the week he would just pick me up from wherever it was that I ended up wandering. After this we would hang out for a few hours have sexy time and then he just dropped me off on the house. I know that most of you are thinking, come on up just get your head out of your butt and realize what a bunch of BS that is. And believe me, while writing this, I realize how much of an idiot I was. But it gets better. Or should I say worse? The day before I have to get back to Italy, he took me out to dinner. With his six-year-old son and his sister. I was super happy to meet his family and son, but got caught off guard when he just introduced me as his friend from Italy dropping in town as a tourist. Her sister was super sweet albeit a bit awkward and his son was adorable. We ate, talked and off we went. He picked me up first thing in the morning and dropped me off in the airport. Now, that you got the full story, I'll get to the good part. Two days later and still a bit jet lagged, I got a very interesting email. From his sister Dana. Her email was short and very simple. Dear Gina, I know that you might think I was weird and maybe a bit rude when we met, but I was only acting in such a way because I was tricked by Jake to join the dinner with his kid. He never mentioned that you guys were dating but after confronting Jake, he confessed and begged not to tell anyone or his marriage will be ruined. But you seem to be such a sweet and young girl that doesn't deserve his deception. Jake is still married and never left their home. Don't take just my word for it. And Dana sent me pictures of his real Facebook profile and surprise. The perfect little family. I thanked her and shut down my computer. I was devastated. I really thought Jake was the love of my life and was seriously considering moving there. I spent all night crying and drinking wine until I experienced the worst migraine. But the heartbreak lasted about 12 hours. At 4 AM I got up, showered, made a pot of fresh coffee and started planning my revenge. I was hurt yes, but also angry that he didn't only deceive me, but dragged his sister and his innocent child in his lie. I was at the other side of the world and I didn't have the money to pay someone to kick his booty or egg his car. But as my Sicilian father would say to me, 
If someone slaps you, don't turn the other cheek. Remove their freaking hand. And so I did. Cue my sweet revenge. I sat down on my desk and turn on the computer and log in his hotmail. I didn't have the password, but I knew him well enough to answer his three basic security questions. So I actually got into his hotmail account and thought, holy moly. This arrogant piece of human crap was not only dating me, but two other girls. I quickly logged onto his Facebook too because he had everything linked, the naivety, so I quickly changed all his passwords too. I'm a prick and discovered that his personal email was also connected to his work account. I dug through his emails for two hours, this idiot never erased anything so he had more than 5,000 emails. Until I found something very interesting, the girls he was also seeing in their very deep email exchanges. Banana pics included, so what did I do? You guessed it. I crafted a very lengthy and explicit email with pictures and chat logs attached, confessing to Jake's wife. Posing as him obviously. Begging for forgiveness and declaring how much of crap person I was and as a proof of my willingness to change and transparency was sending this email to the girls too. But that I did it only because I actually liked men and thought that being a player would help me forget how much I really loved other guys. That I was sick of pretending and hoped she could move on and maybe stay friends. But not only to them. I copied his entire list of contacts. Including the CEO and partners of the company he worked at, his parents and added his sister's mail too. This email was perfect in its function to be utterly destructive. All the pictures and chats, my own included, he ever exchanged with any other women. I copied myself on the list obviously as a countermeasure and move on to the part 2 of my plan. I changed all of his FB and declaring that I was so relieved that people finally knew who I was. The pride flag was his new wall picture and his profile picture was a photoshopped picture of two guys in love. I created 5 different accounts on male dating websites with all his info, including his phone number and started to chat with a bunch of guys until out of nowhere, this guy sent me, or better yet, he sent Jake a message. Tony was his old friend from university that recognized him on the dating platform, and I chatted with him. I find out he always liked Jake and had been secretly liking him for years and although I felt bad for this later, I set up a date. Part 3 of my plan. One week after this massive internet blowout and his family and friends angrily calling him all sorts of names, and getting fired because his bosses didn't want the bad press. Jake, trying to make amends with his family and friends, organizes a barbecue for his birthday. But I would have paid one year worth of salary just to see his face and his guests when in the middle of their celebration. Tony appeared with a bottle of champagne and a bag full of toys to celebrate privately as I asked. Apparently there was a blowout and everyone left the party flustered and angry. It made him emotional because some psycho wanted to ruin his life. I blocked him and get on with my life until six months ago, when he out of the blue sends me a message on Instagram, asking me why I disappeared and didn't support him when he was on his lowest. Oh boy, the satisfaction I felt when replying, sorry Jake, but I think everything you got was karma for all the lies you fed me, good luck. Oh by the way, it was all me. I proceeded to block him and made my account private. Jake had tried to call a few mutual friends to try to get them to give him my number, but they ignored him. They also got the infamous email. So yeah. I got my revenge and it was worth everything. I know, I'm freaking petty. And for those who think making him appear to be coming out of the closet was wrong of me. Let me tell you that it was only because of his very machismo attitude and homophobic personality. I am 100% with the LGBTQ community and love and support them dearly. I acknowledge that what I did wasn't much better than what he did to me. I was selfish, reckless and stupid. And it did make me feel bad after the whole fiasco dumbed down. I reached out to Tony and apologized for dragging him in my petty revenge. He was upset, but after hearing my side he seemed to be okay with it. He wished I was upfront with him though. We didn't end like BFFs but he's still my friend on Facebook and sends me updates on his life. Once a cheater, always a cheater. An epic story of my revenge on my cheating girlfriend. This is kinda long but it's worth a read. So I'd been on and off with this girl for a while. She was beautiful, solid 9 out of 10. Her and I just kind of clicked right off the bat and it felt very natural. She seemed pretty smart too, felt like I lucked out. Boy was I wrong. We were at that awkward friends but not friends stage for about half a year and then one night she drops the L-bomb. I'm totally cool with it too, let her know I feel the same way. We date for about a year. Then it all gets weird. I post some stupid cute comment on her Facebook picture, just trying to be sweet, 
and this dude comes in telling me I'm too slow on the draw and he's Prince Charming. Enter red flags, why does this dude sound so confident? The we've been talking about stuff kind of confident. So I confront her about it and she insists they are just friends and they just started talking last month. Yeah right, I'm not stupid. Tell her either she cuts contact with him or I'm walking. She chooses the latter because, he's a really great guy. Okay, whatever. I'll get over it. Just another woman hell bent on wasting my time. About a month later she comes crying back and insists she loves me and we are meant to be together. And that guy was such a prick. He sexy timed her and bailed from what I understand. I know she's full of doo-doo but on the off chance she's serious, I have her swear that she loves me and there's no going back this time. Enter Matt Vanguard, Dota 2 players will get the reference. I set up a fake profile with a sizable library of handsome photos from some random guy I found online. Then I add enough info and friends to make it believable, then add her and start chatting her up on this fake account. She swears left and right that this time is different, meanwhile Matt is scoring her number and setting up a date. I had an alternate phone number I used for this. I'm freaking pissed. It takes a real heartless chocolate cherry, to sit there confessing their love to someone they've been with a year and a half, while simultaneously setting up a date with someone else they've never even met and know nothing about. Yay, I'm definitely burning the shallow skank to the ground. What makes it even worse, is that I even did my best to make Matt sound like kind of an idiot douche. She dropped the babe word for example and Matt responded with, Don't call me that again, got it? I'm not your babe. So she's going to school and takes the bus back and forth. I know her classes run pretty late, and buses don't run forever. So Matt is going to pick her up after school in his super fancy car and take her on the most romantic date of her life. Or at least that's what she thinks. He conveniently doesn't get off work until about an hour after she gets out of class. She says that's fine and she'll just study until Matt arrives. Meanwhile, I'm asking her, as myself, if she wants to hang out and she says she has some extracurricular thing going on and her friend is going to give her a ride home. Lol, freak you. So she hits up Matt and says, Hey, are you almost here? If not I have to take the bus because they stop running soon. You can tell she's a little annoyed. He says, yeah sorry, I had to do overtime. We were super busy tonight. I'm leaving now. She responds with, Can't wait to see you. Oh, you can. You can and you will. Time drags by, Matt is now an hour late, he's super apologetic and he's speeding to the school to go get her. Oopsie, I just got pulled over. I shouldn't have been speeding but I felt bad for being late. She only responds with, Seriously? Well, get here as soon as possible. Time keeps ticking and she is pissed at that point. Matt is hours late. Finally I break the news. Sorry, I don't go out on dates with lying skanks. She doesn't know what's happening and asks what I'm talking about. I tell her I'm not mad and it's me. That I set her up to check if she's an unfaithful skank. And emphasize that she is. Then she has the freaking nerve to tell me she wasn't actually going to meet up with him. Are you kidding me? Don't talk to me anymore. I end the conversation by saying. I suggest you start walking, I think you missed your bus. Months go by and she hits me up. She's very apologetic and says the whole incident has been replaying in her mind. I tell her I appreciate it and I'm willing to be friends. But I have a girlfriend, even though I didn't and even if I didn't, I wouldn't date her again. She says she understands. And the subject of our falling out comes up another day, she says her 3 hour walk of shame was the worst she's ever felt in her life. Good. It was the best I've ever felt in mine. Thank you for enjoying this episode, which was made with artificial love. Subscribe to receive future episodes, and tickle the like button for good karma. Do you have any experiences surrounding this topic? Share yours below, I'll join the conversation. And I'll be seeing you, in the next one.